is the Rapid Response Series, Did You Know? CIUS Answers, a daily response to your questions about Russia's war against Ukraine. We have received many of your questions about Ukraine, Ukrainian history, and the current war against Ukraine, the whys and the what's next. Thank you for your interest and for the global support. To answer another question, we have asked Dr. Heather Coleman, Professor and Associate Chair of the Department of History, Classics and Religion at the University of Alberta, and currently the Director of the Program on Religion and Culture at CIUS. Welcome, Heather. My question for you today, are all Ukrainians Orthodox? The simple answer is no. In fact, Ukraine has quite a complex religious landscape. About two thirds of Ukrainians identify as Orthodox, which makes Orthodox Christianity by far the biggest faith in Ukraine. But a further almost 10% are Catholics, and there are substantial Baptist and Pentecostal communities, as well as Jews and Muslims with deep historical roots in the country. And the way that these various groups of believers are organized is very important for understanding the potential significance of religion in the current conflict. Kiev is a profoundly symbolic site in the Orthodox world, and especially for the Eastern Slavs, the Ukrainians, Belarusians, and Russians, who all trace their Christianization to Grand Prince Volodymyr of Kiev's decision over a thousand years ago in 988 to accept Christianity from the Greeks and to baptize his people. This is a potential source of kinship, but also of tension in the modern world. For example, the Russian Orthodox Church has long asserted that Russia, Belarus, and Ukraine make up its exclusive canonical territory, a sort of religious field that other churches cannot legitimately enter. In Russia, the Russian Orthodox Church is the largest religious institution with the most members. Historically, and again in recent years, it has asserted a special relationship with the Russian state. But in Ukraine, the story is much more complex in Ukraine, several churches claim the mantle of being the national church of the Ukrainian people, tracing their roots to Kiev. There are several distinct Orthodox churches, for example. Orthodox Christianity is organized as a family of self-governing churches, and the various Ukrainian churches position themselves differently within this family. The most important are the Orthodox Church of Ukraine, which is a self-governing church in communion with the Patriarchate of Constantinople, and the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, a local church with some autonomy, but under the Moscow Patriarchate. But very significantly, as I mentioned, there's also a large Catholic population in Ukraine, and it too considers itself to be an inheritor of the Kiev tradition. In fact, since the late 16th century, Ethnic Ukrainians have been divided religiously between Orthodoxy, which is dominant in the central and eastern parts of the country, and the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church, which predominates in the western region. The Greek Catholic Church is an Eastern Rite Church. That means that it worships using Orthodox style liturgy, but it is in union with the Roman Catholic Church. It recognizes the Pope as its head. Because Ukrainians are both divided in their religious affiliation and historically comparatively religiously active, pluralism has reigned in Ukraine and in Ukrainian state life since independence in 1991. In fact, Ukraine has a unique organization that reflects this fact. It's an interdenominational Ukrainian Council of Churches and Religious Organizations which for over 25 years has brought together Orthodox, Catholic, Protestant, Jewish, and Muslim organizations to promote interconfessional dialogue and advise the state on church-state relations. This reflects the broader pluralism and high level of civic activism that characterizes Ukrainian public life. As the crisis has unfolded in recent days, the international relationships of the Ukrainian churches have played out in interesting ways. The self-governing Orthodox Church of Ukraine circulated a prayer for defenders of the motherland and called on the international community to help end the conflict. The Pope expressed profound pain in a telephone call with President Volodymyr Zelensky and called for a day of fasting and prayer for peace on Ash Wednesday. President Zelensky has also spoken with Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew in Constantinople, who expressed solidarity and prayers for peace. Meanwhile, to the surprise of many, 
the head of the Moscow-linked Ukrainian Orthodox Church, Metropolitan Onufri, appealed to Vladimir Putin to end the fratricidal war and to respect the sovereignty of Ukraine. As the Patriarch in Moscow continues to support the so-called military operation in Ukraine, another Metropolitan of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church has just today told his priests that they need not pray for the Patriarch. So the religious consequences of the current conflict will no doubt be profound. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Thank you very much for taking time to join us today. I'm Andrea. We'll be back tomorrow with another question and answer about Ukraine. Thank you.